If you're a parent whose child is applying to medicine or dentistry in the UK, or you're a student yourself who's applying and want to find out how your parents can support you with the application, this video is gonna detail exactly how parents can support their children when applying to medicine or dentistry in the UK. For those of you who are new to this channel and don't know me, very quickly, my name's Dr. Ash Hilton and I am a doctor and a dentist. So I have done this process twice and our channel is dedicated exactly to this, how to get into medical and dental school in the UK. So the first tip that I have for parents is understanding all the different types of work experience. There are actually three types of work experience that a child or a student must assemble when they're applying to really build a strong application. And those are shadowing, so that is the bit where they go into hospital, they're a fly on the wall, they watch what the doctor's doing and kind of observe and learn from that. The second is volunteering, where they just demonstrate that they are able to care for others, that they're self-sacrificing, and they can do that in a variety of ways that we'll talk about in a moment. Then the third one is paid work, which is all about transferable skills. Here, often people are relying on you to be there, which shows a level of responsibility on the way to developing those that one day will go on to make a good doctor. So in a very brief nutshell, those are the three areas and the basic skills that they want to see that applicants have acquired when they're mounting their case for why they would be a good doctor or dentist. So how can you as a parent support your child gain work experience beyond the things that we talked about in this video here? Well, one of the first things that you can do is use your contacts. You may know some doctors or you may know some people who know some doctors or even people who maybe run a charity that they can uh, allow and help with volunteering for or maybe run a business that they could provide that paid work that we talked about that would provide that good experience to build that CV for your child. Any contacts that you can think of, start building them now so that when the time comes, you're ready and poised to at least ask the right questions and speak to the right people. The second thing is to encourage your child to phone the hospitals and speak to the relevant departments. In that video, like I say, I detail exactly how to do that, but just encourage them. And sometimes it's a bit daunting to be calling these people on the phone, but just if you want to be there to support them through the first few, help them draft an email, although I would recommend phoning ahead of emailing, but these are all ways that you can at least help them get over that inertia or the maybe the nerves that they have about doing it the first couple of times. And then once they're comfortable, you can leave them on their way to kind of carry on and keep doing the phoning or the emailing. The next thing you can do to support your child is to help them with their university selection. Now, this is such an important part of the application process and often underestimated for its importance because there are so many universities, both medical and dental schools, that have so many preferences over what areas of the application they favor. And each applicant has a different balance of strengths and weaknesses and areas where they've excelled in the application. And it's all about finding the right fit for that person to the right universities for them. That has such a big impact on their chances of success. Now, a great free resource that I can point in the direction of is on our FutureDoc website. We have a medical and dental school guide that you can download for free and check out all of the profiles and work out which ones suit your child's strengths and weaknesses. We also have there an infographic, which is like a one page chart of all the university's preferences to help you at a snapshot get an idea of which universities you should focus on. The next key area to support your child with is the personal statement. Now at the time of filming there is debate as to whether they're going to change the personal statement to instead of being a free form text of 4,000 characters to a broken down version that essentially takes that character count and separates it out into different segments asking specific questions. Now regardless of what they decide to do the advice that I'm going to give here still applies and it's just really important to get your child to start early. One of the biggest difficulties I see with all the students that I teach is that they come very late on in the game with a draft that's not particularly great, needs a lot of work, and then we really have to rush to complete something that if we took a little bit more time, it would A, be a lot less stressful, but also probably be a slightly better version if we just had a little bit more time to comb through things and really dot the I's and cross the T's. But actually the personal statement is quite a big subject area. So the best free resource that I'm gonna to recommend to you for this is actually a free course that I've just brought out, which is specifically for parents helping their child get into medical or dental school. So it's a fully comprehensive course that goes into the 11 steps that you need to help your child build a really strong application and maximize their chance of success. So that course is only gonna be available for a limited time, but if you want to find out how to access that course for free, check out the link 
link in the description below and sign up there and you can go through the videos at your own leisure to give you everything that you need to support your child and get really all of the key information that's going to help build a strong application. Now a very large part of the application is an exam that you may have heard of called the UCAT. The way I would describe it is it's a brain teaser test on steroids that's done at very high speed and a very small amount of time to complete it in. Now this is often a stressful part for students and something that they do need to spend a, a bit of time preparing for and a lot of time thinking about to make sure that they get a decent enough score to be invited to interview. Now really the best way that you can support them with that is to help clear their schedule as much as possible so that they can focus purely on the UCAT in the month really building up to the exam. If you look at all of the videos that I've got on this channel you'll see that the UCAT takes the largest proportion of videos on this channel which kind of pays homage to how complex it is and how important it is. So like I say giving them the adequate space and low stress and kind of helping them stay as calm as possible during that is going to be a big factor but also helping provide them with the right Right resources and if they need one-on-one -on -one help which often students do helping provide that as well is a massive part and is going to be a massive contributor to them getting a good score but again on that free parent course that you can check out the teaser to here I give you a step-by-step -step guide for how to help your child prepare to get a really good score on the aptitude tests now the final stage regardless of whether it's medicine or dentistry applications is the interview now this is the hurdle that people most underestimate and every year I get people who come to me who had applied the year before before and got all four interviews and failed to prepare properly and therefore not got a single offer based on those interviews. Now, it's really important to understand that this is not something that you cram for in the two to four weeks before the interview. It is something that you spend the entire application preparation getting ready for. It's the difference between trying to cram last minute and tick some boxes and trying to kind of fool the interviewers that you're the right kind of candidate versus building yourself into the kind of person that is the real deal and just wows those panels. I sit on interview panels myself and I can tell you that straight away you can tell the difference between someone who's walking in and trying to pull a fast one over the panel versus someone who just walks in and is the real deal and is so good that you really would struggle to deny them a place at medical or dental school. So for that one it's all about supporting them to put that time in to become the kind of person that will just make a great doctor or dentist. But probably the biggest and most important factor in all of this is time. I always have the mantra of the sooner you start and the more time you put into your medical or dental school application, the higher chance of succeeding. That means firstly, getting a place anywhere, but secondly, getting a place at a competitive or prestigious medical or dental school if that's where you're aiming for. So what I would recommend is encourage your child to start early with their preparation. And if you want to get into the nitty gritty and into the weeds of all of the things that I discussed, I recommend that you check out this video here which gives you that free course that I was talking about that is going to give you the 11 steps to building a really strong medical or dental school application. Thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you on the course.